In this very short lesson, we'll learn how to do the calculations for both relative risk and odds ratios using an Excel spreadsheet made by your old Uncle Frank. S but we'll use the data that we used for the last uh, lesson, and we'll look at is there a relationship between whether a patient is warmed before surgery and wound infection. In this case, we'll look at whether or not a person is warmed as being the risk factor and infection as being the disorder. So it's the same data that we had last time. We'll just open up the odds ratio and relative risk spreadsheet. And there are four yellow cells where it says present, 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 absent, absent, present, and absent, absent. And we'll put our data in those four cells. I'll also uh, zoom in a little bit. So there I've zoomed in, and I've entered our data 6, 135, 20, and 120. Now the hard part is to make sure that we, um, is to make sure that we hit enter after the 120. Okay, so that's all we have to do. We can look right below that and it says incident rate of disorder among exposed is 4 per 100. The incident rate of disorder among the non-exposed, in other words the non-warmed, was 14 per 100. So the relative risk is 0.297872. Now we don't actually use that relative risk number. That's our best guess. But that doesn't tell us whether or not the data is significant. What tells us whether or not the data is significant is by looking at the 95% confidence interval. That'll tell us if it's significant at the 0.05. We look at the two numbers, the 0.1233, and the upper number is 0.7195. Let's take a look at the three rules that judge whether or not, that help us determine whether or not a relative risk or, or odds ratio, it's the same rules for both, is significant. Here are the three rules. If both the lower and upper limits are both less than one, we reject HO and conclude that there is a significant decrease in risk. If both the lower and upper limits are both greater than one, we reject HO and conclude that there is a significant increase because of the risk, because of the presence of the risk factor. In the lower, if the lower limit is below 1, but the upper limit is greater than 1, then we fail to reject the HO and conclude that there is insufficient evidence. Now, we can remember that both of ours were below uh, 1. Both were less than the number 1. So we'll use this first row, rule. If both the lower and upper limits are both less than 1, and they were, we're going to reject HO and conclude that there is a significant decrease in risk. So ours are both, we're looking at our relative risk, and they're both below 1. So we follow that first rule. So here's how we would write our decision and our conclusion. Our decision is reject HO. Our conclusion is, at an alpha level of 0.05, Warming patients prior to surgery significantly decreases the likelihood of wound infection. The only f unusual part on this is our statistical string. Here we put RR, looks like railroad or recovery room, but it's just two capital R's next to each other with no periods, equals 0 0.2979. And yes, I do put the leading zero because relative risk can be greater than one. And then parenthesis, and inside the parenthesis are our lower limit followed by our upper limit. So our lower limit was 0 0.1233 comma space 0 0.7195 and a parenthesis period. So that's all there is to relative risk. Now let's take a look at odds ratio. Odds ratios are used in a little bit different situation. They're used in case control studies. That is, I take a certain number of people that have the disorder, 
and a certain number of people that don't have the disorder. And then I look back and see if they were ever exposed to that risk factor. So I can't really say what's the likelihood they'll get the disease or not get the disease because I specifically went out and looked for people, a set number of people who had the disease and who didn't have the disease. So instead of being able to say what's the risk of their getting the disease, I need to say what are the odds that they were exposed to the risk factor. In that case, uh, let's take a, a look at it this way. I, in this study, this is just a totally made up study. That's why all the numbers are round. I would take 300 people who had a wound infection and I would take 300 people who did not have a wound infection and then go look and see of those 300 people in each of those two conditions how many were exposed how many were warmed that's ex the risk factors being warmed I know it's funny to think of a risk factor as decreasing the probability but or the odds but they can so in this case we're saying of those people that were infected 25 per of the 300 were warmed. Of those people that were not infected, did not have a wound infection, 50 were warmed before. Now let's look at that if it's significant. Well, we enter the data exactly the same way. We put in our data. Here we've got 25, 275, 50, 250. We make sure we press Enter. And then we go down to the very bottom and we follow the same rules we did before. So here in this case, our odds ratio is 0.4545, but the lower and upper limit are what we look at to determine if it's significant. Well, the lower limit is below 1, and the upper limit is below 1. So that means we can reject HO and say that there's a significant decrease. If the lower limit had been below 1, but the upper limit had been greater than 1, then we would have failed to reject. And if they both had been above 1, if the lower limit was above 1 and the upper limit was above 1, we would have rejected, but said there was a significant increase in risk. But in this case, they're both below 1, so there's a significant decrease risk. So we would write that up. We're looking here at these numbers. By the way, the numbers in the gray, I included those, but they're very they're almost never used. So don't look at those very often. Those would be very unusual. Those are if I were to look at the odds of getting the disease um, given the risk factor. And we just don't use odds ratios that way very often. And the relative risk would be looking at the risk of being um, exposed to the the risk factor given they had the disease and that's usually an improper way of using it. So the two things in gray I, I put just for completeness but I grade them out because we very seldom use them. So we're going to now complete our steps. Here's our steps. Step six, we've decided to reject HO. Step seven, our conclusion is at an alpha level of 0.05 Warming patients prior to surgery significantly decreases the odds of wound infection. And here we put OR. looks like operating room, but capital O followed by capital R with no periods. Space equal, space, and then we put our best guess, which is 0 0.4545. That's called our point estimate. Then following that, we put our interval estimate, our 95% interval em estimate, which is parenthesis lower limit point zero point two seven three zero, comma space followed by our upper limit, which is zero point seven five six eight and a parenthesis. And when you're reading an article, it's, you look at what's in parentheses to see whether or not it was significant. That was a pretty short lesson. Thank you.